So thanks for staying with us. And uh, well, I want to welcome you back by asking the question, how deep is your love in polygamy? <laughs> Group marriage is a blanket term for marriages that uh, include multiple wives or husbands. And joining us right away is Isyoma Lawal. She's an executive professional, a wife, a mother, and a counselor. She's a graduate of Walmart Behavioral Science and Mental Care College, a civil engineer, enterprise risk manager, and an entrepreneur. Mm. Quite a full basket. True. We're excited to have you, Isyama Lawal. Um, you're welcome to the show. Thank you. And I would say, if we went like 50 years back, a man got married to you, wouldn't have a reason for another wife. With your CV, <laughs> meaning that you're more than capable to bring to the table. Why 50 years ago? <laughs> Abby, so there would be no excuse. Okay, that's by the way. So thank you. Thank you for finding time to be here with us. Really a pleasure. Thank you. Abby. Now, um, John, do I, do I take Go off ahead. from this segment? Go ahead. Okay, so generally speaking, we see that polygamy is practiced in some parts of the world, not only in some parts of the world. Um, a lot of, we, we, we've had information about a lot of things that are happening in different parts of the world where polygamy and the other kind of mar marriage exists. Why is this so? It's all over the world. You cannot say there's a part of this you know, where this is not happening. Why? Why? Why is it so? So I guess we have to look at the rationale. Why polygamy? Why is it necessary to have more than one wife? Okay, can be maybe, let's say the olden days, for instance, or you have a, a situation where you need a large family to thrive, even economically, you know, mm. you have the more wives you have, the more children you probably would have, and then you'll be able to, you know, is that more hands thing? on the farm. More hands, exactly. More hands on deck, right? But if your current situation, as we have seen over the years, has evolved where we are right now, you really don't need more than one wife. Which farm are you tending to? Mm. What are you doing with more than one wife? So really, having different parts of the world practice polygamy, it's based on their context, what is acceptable, how they see life, their way of life. So really, there's really no wrong or right. It's like, is it necessary for you at that time? But if you have multiple streams of income, which is what the farms would have represented in those days, yeah. wouldn't you need more wives to... <laughs> to spend the money. <laughs> well, to you know, one, one wife, one problem. You don't have to have multiple <laughs> and compound the problem. So this is, I don't want to die young. Okay. So really, it's, if, if it's necessary for you in that your context, mm. whatever country you are, yes. then... So you do do what works for you, really. Yeah. Funny enough, I've had some argument, and um, the men say, more wives, more peace for you. Mm. Oh, yes, because then you take the attention of the wives from you, your inadequacies and everything that normally will bring disunity and conflict in a married relationship. So you take that from you, and then the pressure is on them now to find out who is favorite, to, who now pleases you better, and all that. They're not organized Some guys say, yeah. yeah, so about peace for who? So is the guy saying peace for him? For him. I don't think he's going to have peace. <laughs> With all the wives <laughs> hustling for attention. Even in a normal setting, there's a sibling rivalry among children. Sure. Mm. Then you now add it to another wife. Yeah, and you the, know and that it will just be, you know, yes. over, you know, mm. another level. Mm. Then the wives too, everybody's hustling for your attention. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay Isyama. Um, now, the guest before you came in, Dyad um, Adeyemi, you know, asked, answered some questions pertaining to, you know, why do we have polygamy, the way we have polygamy set up in this country, in the north, in the south, and all. Now, he alluded to the fact that in the north, you know, the system is different mm -hmm. to what we have. Isn't it time for, for the state? Mm. to embrace polygamy as a civil uh, across board in, in this country? Hmm. I don't think so. I don't because I am yeah, not But it's for... practiced in one part. It's accepted yeah. in one part. It's accepted traditionally, culturally, all of that. 
So why doesn't the state just adopt it? The problems that come with polygamy is a lot. That's been sentimental. No, let's look at normal life. When it's, when it's time for, in a normal home, the rivalry in the home, the diabolical angle for those that go that far, even when the man dies, to share the property is another kettle of fish. Okay, before the man dies, in the home, the mental, what we call mental exercise that will be going on okay. there, it can't be healthy. So the state shouldn't, we shouldn't make it normal. Rather, let us stick to one man, one wife. Are if you, you answering to, in that manner because you are a woman? Maybe I should have asked a man. Well, <laughs> we can't rule out the fact that I'm a woman. <laughs> and I will speak from a woman's, you know, frame of reference. Yeah, of course. Yes, yeah, so we can't rule that yeah. out. But mm -hmm. even not talking about women, let's look at the problem today. But look at me. You know, from the outside, you think it benefits the man, right? Because he has more choices, mm. other room activities, you know, he has. <laughs> but really, the trouble that comes with it, I see what's at the end of the day. Mm. The... Everybody will be doing Kayamata. <laughs> Who wants to be the most favored wife, you know? Okay. Really. And then marriage these days, in this modern day, is not only about even just providing for the family. You need, they need attention. Mental health is a rave these days. You need to be intentional parents. Mm. You need to be intentional. Can you do that with so multiple, you know, more than one family or more than one? Well, not one of course, they are on the same roof, but can mm. you be intentional with all these children and train them up with you know good emotional intelligence mm. i think I, I think not mm. okay. well yeah. our previous guests you know seem to be for polygamy and um, coming from the point of view of our forefathers what used to obtain in the past um, that they were certainly more comfortable and happy and satisfied with polygamy so what could have been the reason for this yeah, so our forefathers, of course, then it was, you had to have a large family to be wealthy because you're tending to the farms and you know, all those things that used to go on those days. So it could have worked for them. But then again, you know, we're not there to know how our foremothers <laughs> were. Felt about were, it. Yeah, how they, their point of view. You know, we just have this thing about them just being very docile because if you two do, another wife will come in. In fact, so we don't know their yeah, but story. But they were supportive. We cited examples like Helen talked about somebody will go to them, which I love really. The main wife will go to the market. market and bring a younger wife or daddy to say, Baba, I brought you some. <laughs> well, you know. Yeah, it, Helen? The thing is, we're talking about human beings here. <laughs> the wives. We're talking about human beings. How much of the human human consideration is given to the wives in a polygamous setting. Hmm. Okay, let's I'm asking you this question as a professional. Yes. So let's bring it home to Nigeria. You know, it's a man's world. Women are not, um, sorry to say, considered very highly. So women are not given that right. For a man to go and marry many wives, it's seen as, eh, it's his choice, it's okay. But the woman at home suffering mental torture. Mm. In fact, even the thought of your husband having Her stepping girlfriend. outside, yeah. yes, is even torture enough that to come and live in the same house with the woman. You see her every same day. Same right as you have. Yes, same right. You that maybe probably your first wife and you have started with hustle, the husband, with also the... when he was small, he didn't have anything. And then now he's successful. He goes and bring in another woman. So you can just, you just imagine the mental torture that just goes on. So the environment, the, our, it doesn't support the women. The women are on the losing side of this. Mm. And I feel that, why is uh, polygamy so bad? Maybe not if the first wife gives a consent. So maybe in the olden days, the wife will be told or she expects, she knows she's not going to be the only one. Yeah. So, but not in our present day where you have done to have and to hold from this day forward, you are going to be the only one mm. and then down the line i hear you have married somebody else or was still at your grave graveside all the wives and children start popping sure. up yes so maybe on the old thing this was probably more acceptable because the women were even the ones going to choose the wife or you know they, they were prepared for they it prepared, right from yes. the beginning they gave the sort of consent okay maybe not consent but they are aware mm. they, they are told it doesn't just spring up on you 
Okay. And for me, you've already promised to have her to hold in this modern day mm -hmm. marriage mm -hmm. and then you break your vow. That's heartbreaking. That's that's you know betrayal. Mm. Let's put it that way. Okay. Yeah. So the rights of the women, you know, are violated yes. in a polygamous um, arrangement. That's what you're saying. Yes. At least for the first wife, if that was not your understanding at the beginning of the relationship. Okay. You know, so for like the some um, religions, you were already going in knowing that you yeah. may not be the only one. Mm. So that's not a violation because you. You know what you signed up for. Mm. Because yes. I'm having to readjust in my seat <laughs> that the rights of women yes. are violated in, in polygamy. If that's not what you signed this up for. This is highly if That's not what you signed, signed up, up for from the beginning. Yes. What did you sign up for? To one man, to one hold. wife. So, yeah. For better, no. for better for worse. Just you and no. I. It depends on what you signed on for. You didn't sign on for one man, one wife. What? You signed on to be married to your spouse. And you will find that in many marriages, at the beginning, you never say, oh, what I'm signing on for is just you. So maybe we should go and look at that married vow again, mm -hmm. the one that's, yes. you know, the court, the registry, and the Yes, official. because it, it's the understanding. Mm -hmm. I mean, the reason why we're having this discussion today is because times have changed. Yeah. And now women are seeking more equity, more this, more that, and you know, things are turning around. You see? So this is almost like the last fight before <laughs> the women finally take over. Then they will start coming to ask for our hands in marriage. Mm. Because okay. things are changing. <laughs> yes, so anyway, um, marriages, you know, more often than not are meant to or will produce children mm -hmm. because <clears throat> we're, we're looking at who gains mm. in, the, in, in in the polygamous um, mm. setting you produce children who benefits from it at least there ha we have to have a few good things to say about polygamy and the gains that the children will make would you want to point some of that mm. That's hard to think about that there are gains in that polygamous um, setting mm -hmm. because even you talk to people that come from that background, they, don't, they, they, they don't want to do it again. It's not all bad. Yes, but you know, as I explained, sibling rivalry is already high in some, you know, same mother, same father. Mm. Now you bring in another, you know, a step, step brother, step sister. Now, can the parents? Um, share that love equally we know that even our own personal children to share the love equally you know you just have to hide it a bit it's, it's not easy now talk less of sharing that love across all the children there must be that partiality sure. there must be that so and you don't want to do that i don't see i'm trying to i can't think of a gain of raising children in that kind of setting where everybody's vying for attention maybe it will make the children I don't know, uh, take life issues. I find it difficult to issues. accept that we are not able to put a finger on this gain. Okay, let me, or that let me gain help you. Will come out of let me brain. help you. Your first guest said, and I need you to come in here. The first guest said to us, of late, we have heard so many terrible stories about violence in marriages mm -hmm. leading mm -hmm. up to death mm -hmm. disabilities and all of that which it, it's it's something we never thought of in a long while and he says have you heard stories like that from polygamous Polygam. homes okay so let me take a stab so that's that. violence for example yes okay so how do we hear about this violence now it's happening to happening now right that's because we have social media to share the news. Why aren't they sharing news from a polygamous home? They're, they're a one man, one wife scenario. Okay, so they more. Are, the statistics right now, there are more single marriages that are monogamous marriages than polygamous. Okay. So chances are that you will hear it from the monogamous marriage. It was the only days that polygamous was plenty. And then we didn't have the social media to spread the news as fast. Mm. So everything seems as if we're just hearing everything now. <coughs> There's nothing new under the sun. It was probably happening, you know, before. And not reported. Yeah, and not reported because we didn't have the means, you know, not now that everything in the news is at your fingertips. Mm. But 
the answer to his question is that there are more monogamous marriages. So chances. That's why you hear more. Yes, chances that it will be. But then again, I can see his point of view maybe coming from the fact that, oh, so if one wife is upsetting the other one, he has another wife to fall back on. So, so the, the, <laughs> the, the no tension, tension is less. The tension is less. Yeah, I understand where he's coming from. But still, there are issues in polygamous marriage. The issues are more there than issues the, are more the than blessings. Than the yes. <laughs> so maybe the way to resolve this is to bring a polygamous person. To, to share to his, his or her experience. To this show. And a, and a wife <laughs> and who is also... And say, okay, now you are polygamous. Others. Why did you get into that? And, and what have been it? the gains? How are you enjoying it? <laughs> so okay. to speak, yes. All right, so, so from, from... You are a professional and you're a counsellor. And uh, we believe that uh, one man, one wife issues, you know arise and people come to people like you to help them resolve. Um, do you get a lot of clients from polygamous settings? No, unfortunately not. Why not? Why? Okay, so I, I figure that the people in polygamous settings already figure that their marriage has issues already, is, is broken. It's not, I'm not fixing anything because okay. he has other choices. I'm not, but in a monogamous marriage, you're trying to fix the bond with your, your spouse if it's broken. So you're putting more work, more energy. Oh. So you're coming to a counselor. You, are, you actually, you want to work at it. Yeah. But a polygamous setting, if the man is tired, he steps out. Five for late number two. Number two is tired, he steps out. So there's no, nobody, so is it the first time that wants to take him to therapy, for instance? So, mm. no, we don't really and get... And therapy must be we, for we both. Too, yes, yeah. you need to agree. Or you come with all of them. <laughs> you cannot come with all of them. As a group. <laughs> I haven't seen that. Mm. But so, you, you, you don't find that in programmers' homes. It's, mm. it's people that really want to work at their marriage one-on-one -on -one and, you know, come to therapy. Mm. How, is, how is a marriage setting, you know, for someone like you who is faced with people, husbands and wives and children challenges on a regular basis? How how do you where are we are we in trouble are we ah, unfortunately we are marriage issues are plenty and we have this generation we I call the microwave generation we want everything now now mm -hmm. there is no long suffering if it doesn't suit me I carry my bag mm. so we have that generation that do they don't have patience. We do have the long suffering of our parents. Mm. Microwave. Microwave generation. Mm. Everything yeah. should be now, now, fast, fast. It's not okay you for You know me. what, Helen? I, I move on. <laughs> we will bring in <laughs> polygamous family, I'm a microwave generation. generation. <laughs> but see, for now, we have to close the show. Okay. Okay, because, yes, I mean, believe it or not, we've spent, we've taken, we've Quite spent a all our time. time. Yes. You know, uh, okay, so w just before we go, do you have anything else that you would like to talk about this topic? Who benefits from it that we probably haven't touched okay. in a minute? Okay, just to stress that nobody really benefits. Okay, it's not it's not worth it, and the, the emotional stress that comes from it, I don't think it's 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 not worth the benefits. You don't get. In fact, just stop polygamy. That's what okay. I'm trying to say. <laughs> okay. But then again, we you can't do, stop you, it. You do what suits you, mm. and but have consent of your wife. Oh dear. Okay. 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 Thank you. All right. So indeed, the adage: different strokes for different. different yeah, folks. That's what you're saying. So while some would never phantom even the thought of sharing their God-given spouses, you know, with others, a lot of people find bliss we want to believe, for them to stick and even the younger generations, like the situation that we're talking about right now, a very popular friend of ours has just gone into it and he's, um, he's, um, he's of this generation, not of our forefathers. So we would say that uh, if, you, if he works for you, mm, if he works for you. So thank you again, madam. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you for so having me. me. Yes, indeed. Very deep insight there. And we thank you for your time. Uh, that really heated up the atmosphere. <laughs> Let's slow down the slow down the pace a bit, mm, mm. you know, with the uh, beautiful and well well being conscious coach, as Dolly, who is already in the gym to take us through today's exercises. And as soon as Dolly is done from the gym, Farah Shonuga will step in with her guest. And can you guess what is on her mind today? Well, the only way to find out is to stay right here with us. Let's join Dolly in the gym. <laughs>